Hello you! Today is October 23rd, 2011. My name is Silverfish and uh, you're watching Outgrowth Weekly number... 45. I oh. had that memorized. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, here is as well, of course, Anton. Hey guys, how's it going? So, what's up, Anton? Uh, not much, just... Uh... You know, work, 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 and all that kind of stuff. How about Sounds you? Cool. Uh, and for me, it's uh, just school, school, school. I guess it's kind of work, but yeah, yeah, it's actually a lot like work. But I don't need to be there at a specific time every day. <laughs> <laughs> and it's and it's only for school. It's not for world domination or anything like that. Yes, exactly. But in Sweden, we actually do get paid when we go to school. Yes, I know. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. And get education is free. Yeah, in your face, all Americans. In your face, <laughs> free education. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I've been doing that. Uh, we're at the end of a project, so lots of stuff to do. Uh, we're going to be showing our stuff off on Tuesday. So hopefully we'll nice. be able to do that well. So, yeah, let's get on with the show, man. Let's get on with the show. Sounds good. Oh, I, you know what? Something did happen this week, <gasps> and I totally forgot about it and didn't even tweet it till like three days after it happened. But um, the uh, I, I did a recording session with uh, CeeLo Green that aired on the TV show Parenthood earlier this week. So uh, that was kind of cool to see. Mm hmm. Sounds so, awesome. Yeah, if you guys want to go back and watch this last week of Parenthood, the two scenes where CeeLo is recording with a band, the music was recorded beforehand, and I um, helped arrange that and record it all. So it's kind of cool. Awesome. That's awesome. Uh, so yeah, check that out. You're going to have to... Can Is there like a clip of that somewhere, do you know? Or is that maybe um, less than legal? There, there are some clips out there. I know that people who live in the U.S. can watch that episode on Hulu.com. Um, and I've, I've seen portions of that clip in other places. So a, a quick search, you know, you might find it on YouTube or there's some ads that have just portions of that in it. I, I don't know. Um, I don't know an official venue. Maybe I think it's on NBC. So I think NBC.com you might be able to watch it as well. But unfortunately, that might still all be limited to the U.S. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. um, I will say no more. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So check that out if you're if if you can. Uh, if you can. Yeah. So no, let's get on with the show. Let's get on with the show. Let me switch to the view of destruction. So the first thing I want to show you guys is something pretty awesome. Well, first off, um, I should before we actually start with the show, I want to show you the new website stuff I have going on. Um, you can see I have written here archives are being updated. All the shows might look bugged because I'm actually adding all the older shows to the archives. So this is the archives that are actually integrated into the OG Weekly page. So you just change here and you can see when the show happened. You can watch the show and you can see the agenda from the show. So this is last week's show. And then when you go to, and yeah, this is the YouTube player. And then you go to the current show and it switches to the live stream. Oh nice. yeah. Oh yeah. And I can't I'd, I'd, see that in my video, but maybe my video is just lagging. Maybe, hopefully. Otherwise, yeah. <laughs> Remember your own Windows, man. Your own Windows right now. So, but yeah, it's it's working for me. And by the way, I didn't do this myself. I just made the site design, and uh, the guy who actually coded all this is called Dylan Lundy. Pretty cool. Yay, guy. Dylan. So thanks to to Dylan for all this cool stuff. So I'm currently in the process of uh, updating this stuff, as you can see, uh, na 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 na, right here, and it starts on nan at and uh, nan undefined at nan and nan U to C plus one. But I have added all the videos, so you, if you want to watch video 36, you won't be able to see the agenda or the time, but you can still watch the video. But hopefully, I'll have that sorted out pretty soon. Awesome. And yeah, it's cool. I think it's awesome, awesome stuff. Awesome, awesome. And then I have another th other thing to show you. Um, learn underscore more made an awesome JavaScript thing for me to use in my Chrome, 
where I can just click a very this text down here and oh, oh, oh what's this? Looks like there are checkboxes in the agenda right now. So thanks learn more for that uh, little script for me. Uh, so now we won't, won't be need to be keeping track of where we are. We can just I can just check the checkbox when I'm done with something and and uh, then hopefully we won't miss anything uh, any longer. Sweet. Awesome. Yes. So let's start out with Alpha One Five Three. This week they added split screen. Oh yeah, they added split screen. Let me see actually. I don't think I have my controller plugged in, which is too bad. Does it work to plug in the controller afterwards? The game has been started. Um, I don't know. My controller is kind of just always plugged in. I see. see. Unless I'm using a PS3 controller and then it doesn't plug in anyway. I see. Well, we'll see what happens. It probably won't work, but whatever. Whatever, man. I'm just going to spawn a dude. A second dude. So what you do to play with the split screen anyways. I'm going to see if this works. Is you spawn another character. And then you select his box. And you press Control P. His box turns green as well. And then when you play, uh, it should have two screens. <gasps> two screens. Does the controller work? No, it doesn't work. But uh, if you have an like, Xbox controller plugged in, it should work to control the second character. It's just that I plugged mine in afterwards, so that's why it's not working. And you can now play cooperatively uh, with uh, your own screen. Awesome stuff. Have you played awesome. around with this, Anton? I, I, have, uh, I haven't had anyone to play with. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it, um, it works for me. And uh, I can sort of really badly control both screens pretty well. So, um, yeah. yeah, it's, uh, it's cool. I, I, I'm actually really excited about this split screen. Um, yeah. I haven't tested it out with anyone either yet. Uh, because, yeah, as I saw, as I said before, I've been very busy with school and stuff. But I'm totally going to test it out as soon as I have time. After this Tuesday. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, this is an awesome feature. We have talked about the co-op stuff before. And uh, it's not going to get any worse, basically. <laughs> <laughs> it's just getting better with split screen and stuff. Yeah. Uh, next we have... Oh, by the way, I actually have this thing works on this website as well. Aw, oh, yeah. Checkbox. Next we have <laughs> Windows crashes write out mini dump files for debugging. So when your uh, growth now crashes, it you writes out a mini dump that you can send to uh, the Wolfire team when you report the bug. Which I hope yes. you do. Wink. But unfortunately, only in the Windows version. Yeah, I don't know. Does he have a better solution for that in the Mac version that he had by default? Or is it just that uh, he doesn't have it for the Mac version at all? Or doesn't he need it? Or what's up with that? I just, uh, I don't, I just don't think that either that something about the way that it works is not working on the Mac. I, I get basically no errors or the normal crash errors that I always get on a Mac when anything crashes. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure. Hmm, okay. I'm not sure. Well, it's good um, anyways. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to mention, just so you know, like uh, with the split screen, it's working for you on, on Windows using a Xbox controller, correct? Yep. And uh, for me on a Mac, I'm actually able to run it both with an Xbox controller or a PS3 controller. So, um the split screen and multiplayer stuff is very cross platform you know it works on all the platforms right now which means uh if they get a networking version it should work cross platform as well nice that's so awesome yeah sorry i i just wanted to think about that when we were well i was still thinking about the split screen mhm mm yeah i'm thinking that maybe they can at least like next step uh, from this is implementing lan support uh, mm -hmm. And uh, it would be cool if that could work cross-platform. Yes. But, yeah. It's cool stuff. I love the split-screen stuff. I love multiplayer in Overgrowth. Lots of people have been asking <laughs> about it, and uh, they're asking because it would be awesome. So, it's good to see this stuff. 
Yeah, and it feels awesome. My the only thing that I wish is um well there there are still some weird things with it. Like for example, only the screen with the keyboard and mouse has sound effects. So if you um if if you're playing co-op and you go off into different locations, the person with the controller won't hear the sounds of say the bunnies attacking, which is a good clue for blocking and dodging. And so uh that can be an issue. Yeah, so. if I recall in previous alphas, they had it so that uh, when you entered uh, multiplayer mode, you lost sound because he tried capturing sounds from two places at once. So it just, and then like you didn't have any sound. <clears throat> so I guess it's better to have sound from one of the rabbits than no sound at all. I hope he'll just <laughs> fix that later, I guess. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. What happens is what I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's... Uh, it's awesome though. I love split screen. It's only going to get better. Okay, so next we have yeah, Windows Crisis Bright Admin Dump. Yes, as we said. So that's good. Send that. Send those to them. So then we have uh, some Angel Script error messages. Display call stack. This is uh, useful for uh, scripters because you can see more clearly where the error message is coming from. Nice. Yes, indeed. And then added a log file.txt output. So everything that happens in the console right now is uh, output to a log file that you can find in your overgrowth directory. Or maybe in your, uh, I think it's probably in your uh, user directory or whatever it's called, using directory. So right. in your my documents, if you're on Windows, for instance, it's probably there somewhere. <laughs> right. And in uh, your home folder library application support on the Mac. Yes. And then we have a cloth foley sounds for choke animation. That's very good. You can now hear cloth, cloth uh, go brush against cloth when you choke someone. Let's try doing that. See if we get the game doesn't crash now. Oh, it crashed. Okay. That's <laughs> fine. It, uh, that actually happened to me before. It seems if you start uh, co-op stuff and then you remove one of the co-op things and you try to go into play mode again, yeah, the game crashes. Hmm. But uh, I'm sure that will be fixed as well. Yeah. Let's see. I just want to have those cloth folly sounds, man. I just want to hear them. <laughs> Characters. Rep guard. Blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, like when you sound and stuff. It sounds like leather, basically, which is appropriate because they have leather stuff on them. It's yes. good. It's nice. good. And then we have fixed initialization error that could cause slowdowns. I don't know what that is, but yeah, I don't think anyone does except for David. Maybe, maybe David knows. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then we have better pathfinding AI during circle strafe. And he shows that off in the video. I think it's kind of hard to show off. Uh, but it basically means that uh, the AI won't go off the... Uh, mm, uh, they won't go off the path grid, pathfinding grid? Path mesh? Pathfinding mm -hmm. mesh. Yeah, that was called. Uh, when they're circle strafing you. So when they're attacking you, he's showing in the video right now, uh, they won't walk off a cliff just because they want to circle strafe you. But they'll try as good as they can. Right. Which is great. I, yeah. th I think it's I think it's good. You, sometimes they're maybe a little too aware of where those edges are. Like too perfectly backing up just to the edge. But it's, uh, it's so much better than just backing them up off an edge. Yeah. Especially since they don't even ragdoll. It would be good if they, they were like, whoa, and then they fell down in ragdoll state. <laughs> but now they're just like, oh, wait, why did I go down here? Let's try to walk up against like this wall or something. Right, unless it's really <laughs> steep, I mean, like a really far drop, then they'll ragdoll eventually. Yeah. True that. Okay, next we have better... Blah, that was uh, Tethering ends when hit. So I remember... Uh, last last alpha i think it was if you grabbed someone uh, and then someone hit them i think then there was a chance of the guy grabbing not letting go of his grab animation so he would stand there with his grabbing animation and uh, i think that's uh, the bug that is fixed uh, there i think that's what he's referring to makes sense 
And then we have fixed for occasional inverted detail map normals. So detail map normals. The detail maps are uh, the detail, the close up textures on the ground. Almost every texture that you actually see on the ground is part of a detail map. The little small rocks and stuff on the ground that you see there, for instance. You might be able, not be able to see them. Let's actually go into the game because I have it open. As you can see, you have rocks on the ground and stuff. That's all detail map. And uh, apparently there was a... Sometimes that could be inverted the detail map normals, which is actually the bump map for the detail maps. It's kind of technical stuff I'm going into here, but <laughs> yeah. Probably if you know what this means, like if you have any use for this, you probably know what it means. So <laughs> there. <laughs> Fix for rare Mac crash caused by VRAM Qu -qu query. Yeah. D Good. Have you seen anything of, uh, about this? Uh, no, I, I don't know. I mean, it's a, it's a virtual RAM, of course, and uh, no idea what was happening, but glad that it's not crashing on that. Yeah, awesome. And then we have fix for grabbing mouse when window does not have focus. Huh. I'm not sure what I think if you about that. I think if you tabbed out, you might not have immediate control of your cursor. Ah, I see. Yeah. That, that's good. Good that, yeah. that it's fixed. Yes. Then we have loading screen uses a default system cursor. That's kind of bugged right now because... Well, actually the loading screen works, but when you're in the main menu screen, it doesn't work because then you have both the in-game cursor and your OS cursor, at least in Windows on my computer. Have you hmm. seen this in this week's alpha? Um, I'm, I, I've seen it in the past sometimes but typically clicking on the screen will get rid of it and then the cursor remains the custom cursor um, um yeah the thing is I, it's not actually my os uh, my os default i think it might be the mac default or something because as you can see mine is white and uh, and black at the edges and that one, other one is white on the edges and black in the middle so it's actually not my default cursor what does the mac cursor look like is it black uh, yeah, it's um, it's it's black with white borders. Yeah, so I probably get the Mac cursor then. Yeah, something that needs needs to be fixed, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. Yes. Uh, so next we have loading screen uses a default system cursor. That's the one I just said, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it is. Yes. <laughs> These checked boxes. I'm going to get used to them because th I think they are better than not having checked boxes, but I need to get used to them. <laughs> <laughs> and next we have enemies don't use fighting stance movement when not hostile. That's good because um, when you were walking around, I don't know what. Oh, wait. Yeah, if you if you had enemies in your level and you made them not hostile, then they just patrol around. But if you walked closely to enough to them, they would be like, whoa, towards you. And they would be like, I'm going to fight you. But they still would walk the same path. Do you understand what I mean? They would enter their fighting stance, but they would still keep walking in the same direction. So they would be looking at you and be ready to fight, but just keep on walking. It looked really weird. So it's probably that bug that's fixed now. Okay. And that's good. I, I believe you. I thought it yes. was funny, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's funny. Yeah. And that's the end of the uh, change log for this week's alpha. Boo, yeah. It's a nice alpha, especially with the split screen. That's, uh, I think it was the last alpha and the w alpha before that. I was like, I think this week they're probably going to add split screen, but uh, they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he had been talking about it, but he did add it this week. Yay, split screen. Yay. So now we just need that sound fix, and then it should be very playable in, in split screen. So that's nice. The one one thing, I, I made a mistake. I said virtual RAM for VRAM, and, and I meant uh, video RAM for for when VRAM oh, yeah. is... Uh, yeah. Virtual RAM, I guess, is called virtual RAM. <laughs> Maybe. And Sorry this is video that. RAM, then, I guess. Yeah. Yes. I see, cool. So that's the alpha. Checkbox, aw yeah. And then we have the fan art watch for this week. So every week we take a look at what's new in uh, the fan art topic on the Wolfire forums. 
So let's take a look. Let us take a look. Let's take... Is this new? 16th of October. It's... Did we see this one last week? Um, I don't recognize it, to be totally honest. Yeah, so... He, oh, he made it while watching our Growth Weekly. So, Bjarke Dude... Bjar, Bjarke Dude? Dude? Made an image <laughs> of a, like, cartoony rabbit with blood on his face. And it says, "Aww," And then bunny face or cat cat mouth whatever but but it's <laughs> it's nice <laughs> <laughs> so that's one made by Jarky, i like dude. i like the blood to be honest yeah kind of light on the edges dark on the inside and then the sort of it's the cartoony style kind of cool <laughs> yeah it's kind of a clash of styles like i guess he wants it to be like oh a cute rabbit and then he, the rabbit has got blood in his face and uh, he really achieved that so well done man yep and that's and then we have this image of a goat by hi ho he hi ho <laughs> what, what's up with these weird names today <laughs> <laughs> they're here just to confuse you i see uh Open image, new tab. So here we have a goat, a sketched goat. I really like this image. It, I think it's awesome. I think it's a something that has completely been overlooked in the fan art so far. Uh, almost every other mammal has been <laughs> made into a, an overgrowth style character, and I think the goat was long overdue. Yeah, goats. I just, uh, like, looking at his images, he has another one down here. I just think that goats are awesome, though. Yeah, they are. They they seem great. I mean, they should have uh, they should have good balance. They have natural weapons. They have uh, awesome looking fur and 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 beards with braids in them. I mean, what oh, more yeah. could you ask for? <laughs> you just need to tint that beard, and then you're done. <laughs> a little more pink. A little more pink, anyone? Yeah, maybe, maybe a bit, a bit more pink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, goats, man. I really like the style of these as well. Yeah, that, that I like that they are so sketchy. It adds a feeling. Yeah, it's kind of a comic. It feels like, it feels like it could almost blend into the to the OG comic already. Yeah. So I totally agree, man. So really nice done, nicely done by Hi Ho He, and actually has another image down here with more goats in them. I guess he really likes goats. <laughs> and this Can is more. Can you blame him? I can't blame him. So yeah, <laughs> nice man. <laughs> more goats, uh, kind of sketchy style still, and um, there are lots of goats in this image. Yes, there are. Too many goats, I think. Any, well. <laughs> I mean, rabbits against goats. I think actually the goats would be pretty... They would probably win that. I feel like goats have strong legs and they have hooves as well. So That's right. That's right. That'd be more. good for kicking. Yeah. Yeah. And horns. I mean, you know, how 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 well does a, you know, a jump kick work, you know, uh, from midair if, if you land on someone's horns and puncture yeah, your exactly. foot, you know? Man. I think we've found the natural enemy of the <laughs> of the rabbit. <laughs> yeah, they're like killing machines. Now I'm afraid of goats instead. <laughs> I hate goats. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, hi ho, he did his job then. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> so very nice images by hi ho, he. Nice name, by the way. Hi ho, he. Hi ho, he. Hi ho, he. Hi ho he. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the end of the fan art watch checkbox for this week. Next up, we have a level. We have a Sops challenge by Aduga. Did you play this, uh, Anton? I I played it and I recorded it to make a video, and then uh, I unfortunately never edited the video. And I know that you emailed me like yesterday and were like, don't forget the video. And then I was like, ah, I forgot the video. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll just uh, do that next week. Then. Like, okay. Yeah. It's going to be great. The level the, uh, we can talk about the level because I was able, I was able to play it. Um, 
and I know that uh, Adwuga said that there were some problems um, with frame rates on his computer, but on my computer it actually runs just fine. So what I can tell you about the level is that there's some cool platforming, some sort of interesting layout designs and some challenges, and then there are a bunch of enemies for you to kill. And when I say a bunch, it starts with one, then kind of two, then a guy with a spear, then two guys with a spear, then three guys with swords. And getting past three guys with swords, even if you have a spear, is no easy feat. So um, it's an awesome level. I actually, I actually really like it. And the color scheme, it's kind of funny. He said the colors were have no real meaning, but they feel kind of cool. They feel very... Uh, oversaturated in a in a kind of interesting way so i i actually like the colors in the in the level too mm -hmm. yeah i did actually remove all the enemies because on my computer for some reason i couldn't play the level like i had one or zero frames per second when i played it so what i did i opened up the xml file and just removed all npcs and then it i had 60 fps so for some reason he went over some hard limit on my computer where it's like no i'm dying <laughs> when i tried to launch the level um i guess my computer isn't that good after all <sighs> but uh, yeah so i did uh, run through it <laughs> and i have to say like you know at the at the very beginning there is that hedge right that yeah. huge hedge did you also run through that and fall down. <laughs> I did the first time, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to take it very slower because there's some probably something behind there, and I still fell down. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so be on your guard, man. Be on your yeah, guard. Yeah, after, after that, I started saying, you know what, maybe I'm not supposed to run through the hedge. Maybe I'm supposed to go over the wall. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it's pretty easy to go over the wall. So I've, that's what I do now instead. Yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice trap. <laughs> that it is so yeah we're going to actually have a video this uh, for next week's Overgrowth Weekly uh, I'll, I will try I will try <laughs> yes if you have time if you have time. yeah we'll see we'll see what I can do it's going to be awesome and uh, I just got a message actually from Zed that uh, he just posted some fan art in the fan art thread uh, so we're going to take a look at that oh uh -oh. here we go so he says, phew, they just finished the fan art watch when I uploaded this. Yes, indeed, we did. And here it is. It's a really nice cat dude. I That's like pretty cool. It. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. For being a cat, it feels almost not... There are not enough patterns to, uh, for him to be a cat somehow. Uh, I don't know about that. It looks like a pretty fine... You know, I mean, maybe he's a humble cat, cause it's, it's, but it's still pretty... Hmm pretty cool and then uh, the kanji on it uh, definitely gives it sort of a, a very Asian feel yeah um, yeah I'm not saying is, um, I'm not saying hmm? it's a bad thing I'm just yeah it feels if it's weird to see a cat that doesn't have like <laughs> patterns on it all over the place ah uh, yeah yeah so I think it's cool yeah I really yeah. like it it's it's yeah. really really cool I'm I'm curious if his if his kanji is supposed to mean anything uh specific. The the two kanji that you can see are middle and heart. So I'm I'm curious if he has a a point to that or if, if they just looked cool. Um he says kanji means loyalty in chat, so I guess it means loyalty. Okay. First I, I thought that, that he meant that the word kanji means loyalty and I'm like, what? And then I understood that <laughs> the kanji means loyalty. Yeah, makes more sense. Right. Yep. Well, and and if you, I mean, since it's a, since kanji is a pictogram, since it means the middle of the heart, I could see that, like your your sort of center of heart, your true, you know, I could see that being loyalty. So cool. Yeah. And awesome. uh, with the loyalty thing, it almost feels like he's some kind of ser servant. Maybe a little bit, yeah. I don't know if that's weird though to have cats serve cats in in the overgrowth universe. Because I'm guessing he would serve a cat, because cats are <laughs> <laughs> the the kinds of dudes that want servants. Right, the most uh, aristocratic 
of the races for sure. Mm-hmm. But it kind of almost seems like a religious servant to me more than a, um, than like a, a personal servant, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. I don't know. Something about the robes and the sort of the tassels that are hanging off the arms. Yeah. At the same time, it's, like, couldn't you imagine him coming, being like, "Yes, master," and then he's like, "Bro, go get that guy," and he's like, "Yes, master," and then like walks away. That's true. That's true. <laughs> but in any case, I must say though, the face is awesome. That if, like, if you if you just ignore the robes, the head is is by far, you know, it's it's a really cool, very good looking cat yeah, face. I agree. I really like it a lot. It's awesome. The face is amazing amazing face yes and uh, that cat was made by Sed so thanks nice Sed, Sed for that nice job man next we have a character it is the only character by EDT so EDT actually got the only character from the game Oni uh, or something maybe I don't know. Maybe, maybe only. I actually don't know either. I. But I thought on. the character's name was Konoko. Huh. Maybe I don't know. But I actually have that character here. I should have it. However, yeah, Konoko. Oh, the character from Oni called Konoko. I'm stupid. I haven't played this game actually, so I don't know what anything about it. But it should work now. I hope. Yeah. There we go. And I want to play. And there you go. It it's it has some skinning bugs. Like you see her. Her mouth is like, brr, brr, brr. <laughs> <laughs> like brr. but in general it works very well. Oh, and also her arm is kind of inside of her, kind of in a weird way. Yeah, but, like the shoulder is inverted or something, right? Yeah, but in general this speaks. This is very. It looks very good for being a humanoid character using a rig that's made for anthropomorphic characters. Yeah. Like, if you look at the running in Snow Motion, it actually almost looks better than the current characters that are made for the rig. Crazy. Yeah, it looks great. Nice job, guys. Yeah, and it feels... Was there several people who were kind of helping him with this? Well, I know that uh, Corbin did a lot, and I know that Last did a lot. Or at least they both did stuff to help. Yeah. I think Corbin did a lot and then last kind of fixed a few little things or something. Mm -hmm. I know they both helped. That's all I remember. Yeah. So this is really good. This is a good example of community teamwork to get this uh, Konoko character into the game. Yeah. Nice. Yes. I should probably change that on the agenda <laughs> later. <laughs> it's actually Konoko, not Oni. But uh, yeah, very nice job. EDT, Last, and Corbin. It awesome, was Corbin, guys. right? Yes. Yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> my memory, my memory. Next we have The Blood Mud by Last. So, stop doing that. Uh, next, what am I saying? Uh, last week, last, last, uh, like for a lot of weeks, Last has been updating his Blood Mud, but now he added a new feature to the Blood Mud. Actually, he combined his blood mod and his no death mod into one, and now you have this nice menu that you can use to turn on and off the different mods. And this is integrated into the escape menu, I think. So you hit escape to enter the game menu, and you have these two new buttons when you have the mod installed. Which is awesome. Yeah, I haven't actually tried it to see if it works. As I said, I've been busy, I'm sorry. Sorry, but uh, I'm sh I'm assuming it's working and it's awesome. This is the first mod that has been that has actually used any user interface to actually control the mod. I think I there was this other mod, the slow mo mod, wasn't it? Yeah, he tried to get it to work, but he said he had problems. Yeah, right. I think yeah. so too. Yeah, but uh, last got it to work. And, but I uh, think with the help of the guy who was doing it in the slow mo mod, from what I remember, they sort of talked at least about what he had done to make it behave the way he had. Hmm, I see, cool. Yeah. So it's really cool to see that it's actually working. It bodes well for future modding. Yeah, that you can implement your own uh, menu system will be important. Yeah, very much important. 
Next we have a, another mod. We have the minimap mod by Dr. Gester. Dr. Gester? Or Jester? I think I think it's supposed to be Jester. Dr. Jester. Yes, indeed. So this guy made a minimap mod. Actually, someone posted an image down here. It's kind of like Lugar's minimap, isn't it? A little bit, yeah. With little triangles facing the direction of the character. Yeah, I, I actually... I remember when I played Luguru, I just played it on uh, on the hardest difficulty, and there you don't have a minimap. It was Correct. just in the very beginning that I played on easy and normal. Uh, so I didn't quite remember, but I, I did recognize it, so I thought it was from Luguru, so that's good. And they've been talking about adding like overviews of the level, but currently I don't think there's a way to automatically generate that. Or I don't know if right. there even is a way to just display it on the screen. I guess it, there should be. In um. Maybe, yeah. I mean, it, it would be like sort of a second camera from a certain height above the character or something like that. Yeah, that would be cool, actually, if it was in real time. But I guess it would be make more sense if it was just a static image. But in any case, uh, well, that might be very hard to implement, especially using mods, because you need to know how big the level is and and all that kind of stuff to get all the... To get make sure that the places on the map match up with the places of the characters, if that makes sense. So that yeah, the character I, actually is where he's supposed to be on the map. Yeah. I think that um I think that having the whole map might not be so useful because the maps in the level in the game by default are huge. So I think that having a a sort of panning map might make more sense, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So maybe yeah. there could be just like an overview. Then a camera would make sense, kind of in a way. But at the same time, I feel like a camera would be almost too much. <laughs> it's like, here's a second view, so you can see everything. But I mean, yeah. that's basically what the minimap is anyways, I guess. Correct. Yeah, but anyways, this is really cool to see. Really cool. Uh, I guess David though will implement his own minimap if he plans to port that feature from Luguru. I don't know, but we'll see, I guess. It's a cool map, uh, anyways, and it's made by Dr. Jester. Correct. So it looks great. Yeah, it's awesome. Damn it. I said awesome. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> yes, indeed, I did. I kind of told my you... my friend at school that I would try to not say awesome and indeed as much in Overgrowth Weekly, but I guess I failed. Dang it. <laughs> indeed. Yes, oh, indeed, sorry. I did. <laughs> indeed. So that brings us out of the community segment and into the community side notes segment. It's kind of like the community segment, but uh, we take everything much faster here. So we have first the dev tool. It's an angel script dump made by learn underscore more. Every week, learn underscore more makes a script dump. He takes some information from the Overgrowth EXE file, uh, which tells him what functions you can use via angel script. And uh, he allows you to download that list so you can use it while you're scripting, which is super, super useful. Yep. Next, we have linear level kit by Zeramuliz. Zeramulis has updated his linear level kit, which includes uh, includes functionality for checkpoints and uh, killing surfaces, which is very useful for mappers. Correct. And next we have uh, your actually Samus Aran's main menu mod auto updater. So Samus Aran updated his uh, main menu mod updater. Which right. is the mod made by Anton. <laughs> which also was updated this week. Oh, cool. It was? Yeah, it was. So, But only using um, Aaron's updater tool. Uh, I haven't updated the, the full packaging, which uh, I think I might abandon because it's so much easier to use his updating tool. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's cool. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I added I added in the a few levels or did, was that last week already? Like it was it was on the same day as Overgrowth Weekly. It was last Sunday, so I'm not sure uh, when it was. Oh, 
It All was right. at 2012 for me, so I guess it was one hour before Goth Weekly for me. Hmm, okay. So maybe we did cover it last Maybe we did. Week? I'm not sure. But anyways. All right. <laughs> this this mod, anyways, it adds like f over 45 levels, I think you said. Yeah, it's, I think it's 47 custom levels. Oh, there was an update this week. It, it adds 47 custom levels, and it actually also includes the test level from um, the uh, alpha video from this week. Oh, cool. Yes. Nice. So there, there was. I knew there was an update. So that's that's what it was. So. Did you write about the update? Because I haven't. Yeah, I did. But there was. Where... There's been a lot of conversation about the updater tool. So. Where? <laughs> well, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> So this mod, it adds a lot of custom maps that you can just you can just download the downloader and then it will automatically download 47 custom maps for you to play in Overgrowth. It's super. It's just super. Yeah, and uh, it's actually really pretty easy for me to update. So as people add more levels, I'll keep uh, loading them in and uh, keep using Aaron's tool to install and update from. Um, I'm sorry, I just zoned out there for a while. <laughs> oh my god. No worries. I didn't catch any of that. Did you say something just that say, I needed to respond to? Just say awesome. I can't say that. I can say supreme. <laughs> Someone wrote that, Gnarly. wrote that in chat. Yeah, I get rad. It's rad. Tubular. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So next we have a skin, it's Terminator Turner by last. So we actually showed this to you guys last week live. Like, I got the mod uh, early, and I could show it off to you guys, and this week it was released for everyone to download and use. Sweet. Yes, indeed. It's it adds a new character that has a gross uh, texture map. If you enjoy <laughs> gross texture maps, this is the mod for you. It's actually pretty, pretty cool. So, yeah. well done last. Next we have the Bear Clan character by Andridge. Uh, he hasn't made any uh, visual progress right now, uh, actually, but he's working with Blender and it seems like he's, uh, he's making some progress despite having lots of stuff to, be at, to do at the university and stuff. So hopefully, like he's still working on it. It's just uh, he's getting used to Blender. He hasn't used Blender before. So hopefully next, next week we'll be able to see some stuff. Right. And might, we might suggest to him uh, maybe collaborating with uh, Orbane 3, and, who has gotten a lot of uh, rigs into the game, at least to discuss maybe what has happened, what has worked, what hasn't, if yeah. that's the point where he's at. Mm -hmm. With Because uh, I know that I know that attaching the, the skeleton, the rigging of the character can be one of the more tricky elements. Yeah, it certainly isn't super easy at all. So that would probably be a good idea. Yeah. But that's the end of the community side note segment. And that brings us into the news segment where we take a look at what's new as of late. So first up, we have an awesome Linux update. Oh my good lord, this is a Linux update. So we have Urkel. He says, I'd like to introduce myself. I am Edward Rudd and I'm currently underway on porting Overgrowth to Linux 32-bit and 64-bit. I will be trying to post updates to this thread on the status of the port. I hope to be able to get an initial quote running unquote build in the next week or two and will share a screenshot once that happens. Nice. And that is uh, Urkel's voice from now on. <laughs> Linux genius. So, yeah, it's awesome. So this guy is actually the guy who's porting Lin Overgrowth to Linux. I almost said he was porting Linux to Overgrowth. Now that would be awesome to have Linux <laughs> in my Overgrowth, but uh, not very useful maybe. But yeah, anyways. <laughs> and yes, he is the same guy that uh, did the Frictional Games Linux ports. So he should be good at what he does. Yes. Yes, you know, indeed. you skipped something else on the community section. What? I have my check boxes. That's impossible. <laughs> I know. You didn't put it on the agenda. Oh, well, that makes sense then. Someone someone released some, uh, some map-making tutorials 
and they're not featured here. Ooh. <laughs> oh my good lord. <laughs> Oh, how could I miss that? That's kind of <laughs> weird I of hope me. you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I made a tutorial this week for uh, uh, newbies to overgrowth. Let's see, do I have anything there? No, I don't. Let's put that there. Hello and welcome. My name is... And in it, I show you how, like, the basic controls of mapping for overgrowth. Um, yeah. yeah, I teach how to move your camera around, how to enter and exit edit mode, and I show you how uh, how to spawn objects. I show you how all the tools you can use to manipulate objects, uh, and uh, how you can also duplicate them. And I show you how to create a quick floor, and that's about it. I should probably show you how to save your level as well. That's kind of something that I, that I forgot. I think I'm going to add it to the description or something. But you, you use Control S to save your level if, if you're wondering. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, I guess you should add that, huh? Yeah, I'm probably going to add a an annotation or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of important when you're mapping. But it should be all you need to get started for yeah, in mapping for Overgrowth. And I'm probably going to release some more tutorials in the near future. I felt I just felt I just felt like making a tutorial. I was like, hmm, that tutorial is like 100 alphas old. Uh, I should probably make a <laughs> basics tutorial again because I I didn't like the the asset that uh, John had used and everything looked so old. Right now it's new and fresh, so I need to to renew it. But anyways. Yeah, so and you're... I think that... Oh. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, it's easy now for you to build a couple more advanced tutorials as well for um, hotspots and uh, decals and uh, grouping and uh, all those other advanced techniques. Yeah, I've already um, gotten a lot of requests, so I should uh, not be short of topics to cover. <laughs> exactly. So to so that's exactly. going to be great, so look forward to that. Just uh, subscribe to the OG Weekly YouTube channel. OG Weekly, what am I saying? YouTube.com slash OG Weekly. Or you go to the OG Weekly website and you have the YouTube right icon right there. So easy and convenient. Yes, so easy and convenient. It's crazy. <laughs> so that's that. It's kind of weird because I made the tutorial, so you might think that I would remember to put it on my own agenda for my <laughs> own uh, <laughs> weekly show. But that's what it's like when you have lots of stuff to do. Now I understand <laughs> you, Anton. <laughs> that's that's what co-hosts are for. <laughs> yes. Thanks, man. My pleasure. I'm here only to serve you. Amazing. Oh my god. Uh oh. Oh. Why am what I happened? saying that? It's amazing. Can I say amazing? <laughs> I'm saying amazing too much as well. It's not <laughs> awesome. Not amazing. <laughs> You, you need a new adjective for things that are good. I like I like tubular. I like it's <laughs> mathematical. I like mathematical, but that doesn't make a lot of sense. And I don't yeah, really like could... math that much. <laughs> Excellent. You, you, you start <laughs> describing things in colors like uh, film producers. Can you make this a little more green? <laughs> yes. Yes, gr yes, I can explain it in colors. And green is good color because green is overgrowth and overgrowth is good. Yeah, but you can't just you can't tell people what the colors mean. You just have to assume that they know what the colors mean. Oh, I see. Well, that's even better. Yes. Then I can vary myself as well. Let's go with that. Exactly. This needs to be a little more mauve mixed with teal. I don't even know what mauve means, but <laughs> it just sounds awesome. Oh my it's god, it sounds pink, okay? <laughs> pink! Uh, oh, damn, mauve. let's move on with the show. Mauve is kind of a purplish <laughs> Okay, we have another tweet. Investigation right. well, state. <laughs> it's, yes. it's, very, it's very good, this. It's very good. It's purple. So actually, I was I was I was talking to David, and I was like, I really liked it when you posted those tweets where you talked about what you were doing right now. Um, 
And he was like, yeah, I should do those more. And then a minute later, there was a tweet. And that's this tweet. So I was very happy. <laughs> so he says, we're going on a god. I was just going to say, wait, wait to uh, push him on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, hint, hint. I really like those. Hint, hint. Yeah. <laughs> it's good that he, re he realized what uh, the true thing was that he needed to do. Well, anyways, working on an investigation stage so that enemies can check out suspicious events without going into full combat mode. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hardcore stuff, man. So I can't wait to see what that means. Does it mean that they're going to start looking around more are those uh you know the visible rays going to be shifting around a bunch uh they're going to kind of be a little more panicked move faster but not full on run you know like there's so many ways that you can sort of be on a high alert setting you know and then also the fact that they'll respond to dead bodies so then dragging bodies out of the way will become important and man this just adds so many layers of complexity to the game that uh, are you know good to finally be here yeah i wonder if he's going to make them because i'm assuming that they will actually start looking around when they see something suspicious and i remember in luger the investigation state was that they were running around <laughs> in like a 10 meter radius like they were like oh my god is he here is he here no is he here is he here is he here what is this oh, and then he was like okay i'm just going to keep walking <laughs> so that was kind of weird i hope he's going to make it a bit more realistic this time uh so i'm wondering if he's going to make it that they just know where to look maybe they'll just find like ends like dead ends in the nav mesh and just go look there because that might be a hiding place or will you need to add like points where you're like okay this is a hiding place uh, so you should probably look here or, or something like that i don't know right interesting yeah it's going to be interesting to see how he actually fixes this but uh yeah as you were saying as well there can be a lot of other things like uh, a very cool thing is that they're uh, their visibility is actually attached to their heads. So if they turn their head, they're ac they they actually look that direction like for real. Not just it just doesn't look like they look in that direction. They actually see where they're looking. Right. And right now they always look straight ahead when they're walking. So maybe they could also look around a bit more. So they have almost a almost a three hundred and sixty field of view. But that would all maybe be too much. I don't know. Yeah. But we'll see. I'm sure it's we'll going see. to be uh, purple. <laughs> yes, and we'll have to learn how to understand uh, when when you're hiding and when you're not, when they can see you and when they can't. Uh, right now it feels like they can see you through certain objects that maybe they shouldn't be able to see you through. So, yeah. um, you know, ho hopefully that will become less the case in the future. Yeah. I'm sure he'll work lots and lots on the AI to make it, uh, to make it green. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the investigation state. Um, we have another tweet here uh, called "Sound Occlusion." He says, "Added simple sound occlusion so sound doesn't travel as far through obstacles," and this is very good because. A lot of the times, I think uh, that shows in... I've been creating videos of the four challenge levels from... Um, uh, that Zeramli's made, yes. Uh, and I think one of the... Like, in one of the levels, a guy actually heard me through the wall. And it was kind of weird because he started running towards me before I even saw him. So, you know, it adds a lot to them not being able to hear through walls. It makes sense and... Uh, and it's going to make the game much better. Yeah, I agree. Um, I also start to wonder if his occlusion uh, is sort of based in acoustics, because I know he has studied uh, certain kinds of acoustics and reflections. So um, slow, low, lower waveforms, uh, meaning with larger um, cycles, can actually travel sort of around and through sort of through but it's really around walls easier than a than a higher pitched sound so certain things should be easy you know should penetrate walls more than like so lower pitches should more than higher pitches so like if you drop a body you know versus like dropping a clangy thing um you know one should 
create m- more sound, but one should be reflected back more than the other, and that kind of stuff. Mm. So, I, you know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how realistic that will be. Obviously, you would prefer uh, probably an enemy to hear if you throw a throw an object, like if you throw a knife or a sword as a distraction. You would rather him hear that than to hear your the pads of your feet softly stepping along the stones, you know. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he has talked about in previous videos that um, that the the rabbits will probably hear worse when there are more sounds. Maybe there could be something like they can only hear a certain amount of sounds at the same time or something. I don't know. Uh, so that. Yeah, they don't just hear everything. If you know what I mean. Right. And uh, someone pointed 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 out in the chat that he did say simple. It says added simple sound occlusion. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. But uh, I mean, but but simple doesn't mean that it has to be, you know, like, boring. Like simple, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it, I, I'm just thinking that it can be interesting if, uh, you know, if a wall prevents all sound to get through, it's not as realistic and i know that it's still a game but um you know we'll have to see i'm i'm excited to see how he does it and i hope that sound spheres bouncing off of walls will look really cool <laughs> yeah um i i think what he has probably done is that if the he just makes a ray check if there's a he makes does a ray from the sound to the character's head and if that intersects an object then the sound is like the sound's range is maybe halved or something like that. That's what I can imagine that he has done right now, at least. It's something simple, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. I mean, he ha- he has those sound spheres that come out from the uh, origin of the sound already um, as you're walking, right? You you used to be able to see the the sort of little spheres moving out and away. Mm-hmm. I wonder. I wonder how much of that we'll see. Like if ray casting is will work for sound and if it's penetrating from the ears and and see now i start to get about you know does the pinea of the ear (laughs) affect the (laughs) directionality you know and all that kind of fun stuff so yeah all right yeah it's going it's very interesting i mean you can do a lot of stuff with this and uh, david has shown us that he he likes putting in cool stuff in the game so i'm sure it'll be very very advanced once it, the game actually does come out. I'm sure it will be. And I'm sure that I've now oversold all of my ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I've built myself up too much in five minutes. Oh no. Oh no. That's not very orange. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the end of the agenda and the end of OG Weekly. So. Do not forget, do not forget to go to ogweekly.com and uh, here you can follow our Twitter, you can go to the YouTube channel and subscribe and you can join us in the Steam group and receive updates when stuff happens. And also, if you have an account on Twitch TV or just in TV, you should click the follow button right there and you'll get an email every time we go live. So, yeah, once again, thank you for watching, and uh, we'll see you next week. See you, guys. See ya.